Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming to our talk, uh, which is one code base, three platforms, X experience with KMP. My name is Arkady. I'm software engineer at X. And here's my handle, if you, just in case you want to follow me. And I'm Eric. I'm also a software engineer at X. And this is going to be a story about rewriting X for Android and how Kotlin multi-platform fits in, in this in this story. But before that, uh, I would like to share some details about the state of the main app, main X for Android, which, you, which is available to download for quite some time already. So it was built by the big team with the big team's needs in mind, which means the architecture, the infrastructure, and all the stuff uh, is quite defensive to like, protect developers from doing like, simple mistakes. Uh, so we have a custom JI framework based on Dagger, like a fork of Dagger, I would say. And there's also a custom navigation framework based on activities, fragments, and classic Android views. And it, there is also a reactive architecture based on Rx Java and event bus. But as it sometimes uh, happens, the team shrinks in size. But new technologies keep coming, like, for example, Jetpack Compose, Kotlin Multiplatter, new versions of Kotlin, et cetera. And the team needed a solution to iterate faster, but without quality sacrifice. And there was a decision to completely rewrite the main app, and we called it Xlite. And yeah, it's a complete rewrite of the app, and it's currently it's in alpha testing. So actually, uh, you can apply and test it and report bugs. But one of the features in particular stood out, which is direct messages. We wanted them to be encrypted by default. And it's a really good candidate for KMP. Uh, here are some requirements of the new app. So it must be a modular architecture, which means like gradle module per feature. Um, and we should be able to use Kotlin Multiplatform in some of the modules, not in, everyone, in every module, but on some of them. And we want to share this code with Android, iOS, and web. Uh, some of the features uh, should be, we should be able to ship some of the features into the main app because we want to add new things there still, even though we're rewriting it with, with the new app. And this is important, we want to use native UI on all platforms, which means we can't use Compose multi-platform. And here's our current tech stack. Um, so we use Kotlin and multi-platform in some of the modules. I mean Kotlin every, everywhere, and multi-platform is in a subset of the code base. We use KTOR and OKHTTP, OK and Apollo for downloading files, uploading, downloading files, etc. We use Apollo GraphQL uh, for API calls, and SQL Delight for persistent storage. And on Android, we use Compose, we use Dagger with Anvil, and for dependency injection, we use Coil for image logic loading, and previously, we used Circuit. I will tell, tell more about this. We, so circuit it is a navigation and presentation library based on Compose. So Kotlin multi-platform, uh, we start with Android, started with Android and iOS support, and we wanted to add web support later. And uh, we wanted to share the data layer with iOS and keep presentation and navigation logic and the UI platform specific because circuit is based on Compose. And the domain layer is shared partially because, again, some of the domain-specific code is in presenters. And we noticed some problems with circuit. So for those of you who don't know what circuit is, it's a library based on Jetpack Compose where you can write your presentation and UI code. So you typically have a, like a class or an object describing your screen and arguments. It, it is parsable. And you define your state class where you have all the data, and you also have callbacks there, uh, event callbacks. That's called from the UI. And then you write your presenters and UI as usual compose code. Your presenters return the state, and the UI absorbs, uh, absorbs the state and like, updates the 
yeah, the screen. And so the actual problems we faced with this circuit were, uh, the first one is it was a significant cognitive load when you write tests for presenters. Because writing composed tests is a bit tricky compared to usual like unit tests when you just test your normal class. <coughs> presenter, te presenter tests were quite fragile. And I mean uh, that even if when you're doing a very tiny minor change in your presenter without changing the overall logic, it's a big chance your test will be broken and you will have to fix them. We couldn't share the presenters with other platforms because as I said previously, they compose based. And we also didn't quite like uh, event callbacks and Kotlin coroutine flows in state classes. And yeah, uh, circuit is, is based on parcel and parcelized and we wanted to leverage Kotlin X serialization. So we decided to switch to the decompose library, which is also a navigation and architecture library or framework, uh, but its, its core part is not tied to compose. So we potentially we are able to share the biz, all the business logic with all the platforms. But currently iOS still only uses the data layer, which is our tech depth. But we are now sharing our decompose components, the business logic with web. An important part is uh, web still manages, uh, uses React for navigation, which means we don't share the navigation logic with uh, web and iOS, but we do share our main business logic. And all that is thanks to the flexibility of KMP, so we precisely can choose what we want to share and what we don't want to share. And our overall architecture looks like this. So we have feature components, we have XChat, Kotlin multi-platform components, and we have the data layer for XChat, the blue squares. And the green squares is our so-called root components that just manage navigation, they're switching between these feature components. We also have our UI, which is Compose, based UI, written in Kotlin. And we have four applications. So the new X slide, the rewrite, uh, the main X for Android, X for iOS, and X for web. So X slide, as you may guess, uh, shares, uh, uses everything. It uses the navigation, the feature components, the, all the UI. But X for Android only uses some of the features so we publish our feature modules to our internal repository as IRs, artifacts, and then integrate them into the main app. X4 iOS only uses the data layer for now, but web uses also the business logic, the XChat components, Kotlin multi-platform. Cool. So <clears throat> I'll talk a little bit more about the uh, XChat, the uh, direct messages rewrite that we work on. So. Um, yeah, as Arkady mentioned, it's a completely end-to-end -end encrypted um, chat device or chat service and uh, multi-device, true multi-device, which uh, a lot of encrypted messengers uh, don't support. So um, you might be asking yourself, how do you share your private keys between devices? Um, we use a, an SDK called Juicebox for that. That's a native um, thing per platform, and then we just, in the KMP layer, call that from an interface. Um, Works pretty well. Uh, we're using a WebSocket for all of our live updates. Uh, the old direct messages feature just pulled an endpoint every 10 seconds the entire time you were on the screen. Um, uh, GraphQL for all of our API calls and um, SQLite for the database. Um, this was a very small team initially. So our total, when we started this project about a year ago, uh, the total number of Android engineers at the company was five. Um, and uh, so, on the direct messages team, it was me. Uh, so yeah, uh, I was the Android and KMP guy, um, two iOS engineers, one web engineer, one backend engineer. We've since grown slightly from that, but starting from this small of a team, it was a huge uh, speed win for us to be able to use KMP and write all of that logic once in one place. Um, so yeah, uh, let us move way faster. Um, the other, one of the other benefits, obviously, maybe not obvious, is uh, that when you write a bug, not that I ever do that, um, you only have to fix it in one place, right? So uh, this is a huge time saver. Uh, and then when you fix that bug, you write unit tests for that bug to make sure it doesn't happen again, right? Um, so yeah, all of the, uh, because it is such a heavy 
feature on the client. Um, all the encryption logic, all the database logic, downloading and encrypting and storing things on the file system, there are a lot of unit tests. Um, and then those unit tests only had to be written once, which is pretty great. Um, this is a, a thing that we weren't expecting was gonna be a huge benefit of KMP, but um, because it's an end-to-end -end decrypted service, uh, we don't wanna do any logging to the server, right? So we don't wanna tell the server that you're messaging with so-and-so because that the whole point is that it's supposed to be a private conversation. So um, all of the uh, information that we have about what's going on on the device is from debug builds only, and it's uh, in logs in KMP. So those logs all get written to the disk, again, only in debug builds. Uh, and then if a developer files a bug, then we uh, can go look through those logs. The KMP benefit here is that those logs are the same if it's iOS or Android or wet, right? So if there's a bug on iOS and they send me their logs from what went wrong, I can look at those logs and tell what's going on because it's uh, very detailed logging. Um, it's truly been a, a lifesaver in some of these fiddly bugs about encryption or uh, yeah, all that stuff. And similar, similar thing, the, the, because we're using SQL Delight, the database is standardized. So if somebody sends me a dump of their database, I can figure out what went wrong, maybe. Um, and uh, the file system, all the, all the downloaded attachments and all that stuff, similar uh, consistency, which is huge. Now for the downsides. Um, so uh, as Arkady mentioned, we have this big legacy app, right? Uh, and then we have the new rewrite, which is where the, the XChat code lives. Um, those are completely different code bases. They're in separate repos. And that's great for moving fast in the new repo. But the downside is if you update a dependency in one, uh, then that's gonna transitively update the dependency in the legacy app when you import that AAR. So uh, for instance, in particular with Kotlin, if you upgrade your Kotlin version over here, you have to also upgrade it in the main app. Um, so those uh, are frustrating issues when they happen, but I think the overall speed gains we got by going with a separate code base and a separate repo were uh, definitely worth it. It's just something to be aware of. Um, the Swift interop isn't perfect, you know? Nothing is, but um, we're very excited about the direct uh, Swift export of KMP that was just announced today, but um, for now, SKIE is great. If you don't use it, you should be. Um, but there's still some things that aren't exactly mapped perfectly, right? And that's uh, sometimes frustrating for our iOS folks. Uh, similarly, uh, the JavaScript story is a little messy. You have to annotate the objects that need to be exported. Um, not all types are supported, like they don't have a long type in JavaScript. They just don't have one. <laughs> so uh, that, that sort of stuff is a, is a challenge when you've, again, got a small team and you're trying to to move quickly on these things. Um, debugging issues when they go wrong, like hooking up a debugger and stepping through Kotlin, I think is technically possible, but not for our iOS engineers. <laughs> um, and so uh, when they see something go wrong, they're, they usually just throw their hands up and send me the logs, right? Which works, but it's not ideal. Um, and then similarly, if we get crashes in the wild, sometimes those stack traces are useless. Um, and so that's just uh, another thing you have to be aware of. Um, if we had a bigger team, maybe we'd be digging into those and <laughs> figuring out why they're useless, but it's a uh, move fast and ship. So uh, web is a, a challenge for databases, for a lot of things. Um, the uh, SQL Delight just released uh, a couple, few days ago, um, 2.1, I believe, that adds a WASM module, um, but we're using uh, I think it's SQL.js or something. Uh, so we ended up having to basically do our own web worker driver fork um, to persist the database to disk because uh, the thing about an encrypted messaging service is that you have to decrypt all the messages. And so we don't want to do that every time you open a new tab, right? We want to keep the decrypted thing that we already did. Um, so we're not burning through your battery. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, that, that, that stuff was all custom, and then you have to uh, have some additional logic around, you know, do you have a single version of the database that's shared between all tabs, or um, do you coordinate between them somehow? Like, there, there's a lot of custom code there that was not uh, fun for the web person to write. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all we have. Um, thanks so much for coming, uh, and we'll be hanging around afterwards for questions if you guys have any.